Today we're going to be deriving the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to Master Meteorology Advanced, the educational weather series diving into the math and physics that drive weather. In today's video, we're going to be deriving the quasi-geostrophic omega equation, one of the most important equations in all of meteorology. Now, if you're looking for the video that goes into the omega equation describing the terms and symbols, check out my channel for that one. In today's video, we're just going to be deriving the equation, not explaining it. So, how do we derive it? We're going to start with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation and the quasi-geostrophic vorticity equation and basically manipulate these in various ways and then combine them together to end up with the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. Like I said, you can see a lot of terms and symbols. If you want to actually understand what this equation means, check out my channel for that video. So, diving into my screen, we're going to start with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation. And if you watch my video on the tendency equation, deriving that one, you'll notice a lot of these beginning steps are the exact same, because they are the exact same. So it'll, if you've watched both of them, it'll be a nice little reinforcement of the knowledge you've already learned. So step one, we're going to start with that thermodynamic equation. And the first thing we're going to do is ignore the diabatic heating term. Here we see this is change with respect to time, advection, temperature, some constants, omega, which represents vertical motion. And whenever you see that J, that represents diabatic. You can just pretty much figure if something has a J in it, that's probably the diabatic term. And we're just going to cross that one out. I'm sure they do that through some kind of scale analysis. And then you'll also notice this term here comes to the right side, so it becomes positive. Step three, we're going to define chi equals d phi dt. That might look familiar because we also do that in the tendency video. Step four, we're going to rearrange the hydrostatic equation for temperature. You can kind of ignore that middle term here. And then we want this T to be by itself. So the P is going to come up here with D phi. And the negative R is going to come down on the bottom with DP. Step five, we're going to substitute that in for temperature in the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation. So in step two, you see we still have temperature there. Now we're going to sub that in for that temperature term. No other changes. Step six, we are going to eliminate negative P over R. So you see there's a negative P over R here. On the right side, we have a P over R. So what we're going to do is take that R, put it up top. Those R's cancel. Take that negative P, put it down low. Those P's cancel. And the negative is going to stay. In step seven, we're going to expand the terms. By expand the terms, I just mean almost like you would in a multiplication problem. We're going to multiply those in. So this becomes dt d phi dp, and this advection term becomes advection d phi dp. Right hand side totally stays the same. Step eight, we're going to reverse the order of partial differentiation and rearrange. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's actually not that difficult. All you're going to do is take that dp, put it on the other side. Take that dt, put it under the dphi. So we basically just switch those. It's a more simplified way of saying reversing the order of partial differentiation. And you'll also notice that this term here, our advection term, came over to the right-hand side. Now we're going to substitute for d phi dt with what we called chi. We define that in step three. So where's our d phi dt? Right there. So we're going to substitute in chi and put it with the d dp. Right hand side stays totally the same. And after step nine, we have a new equation. We're going to call this equation one. We're going to hold on to it and use it later in the video. Next up, we're going to start with the quasi-geostrophic vorticity equation. So in the last one, we manipulated the thermodynamic equation. Now we're going to do the exact same kind of steps to the vorticity equation. 
why we're doing this, it'll start to make sense towards the end of the video. So we're going to start with the vorticity equation. Once again, we're going to define a term this time. That term we're defining is going to be vorticity. That's the symbol for vorticity there. The sub g makes means that it has to do with geostrophic balance. And this is just what vorticity is equal to 1 over f sub 0 Laplacian of geopotential. That's a good thing to just memorize because that comes up a lot in advanced meteorology. That's probably one of the most important things to memorize right there. Now we're going to substitute in for that vorticity symbol. We're going to start with this one here because it's a little easier. You see that vorticity right there? We're just going to substitute that on in. Vorticity symbol disappears and instead we're left with that term. On the left hand side, you see the vorticity symbol up there. We're going to substitute that in there. But now we're going to put that geopotential, the phi, we're going to put that with dt. Leave the Laplacian on the outside along with the constant. Next up, we're going to define chi equals d phi dt again. And in step five, we're going to substitute. So where was the d phi dt in this? Right there. So that's just going to become a chi. And I believe, oh, there was one other thing we did. That 1 over f sub 0 is going to get distributed to the right side. So it's no longer on the left hand side. You see here there was no f sub 0 on the outside. Now there is. And that f sub 0 becomes an f sub 0 squared. And we're going to call this equation 2. Next up, we're going to put those equation 1s and equation 2s together after one or two manipulations. The first thing we're going to do is take the Laplacian del squared of equation 1. So here's our equation 1. By taking the Laplacian, I mean just write that del squared in front of every single term. No other changes. Step 2. We're going to differentiate equation 2 with respect to pressure. All that means is you're going to take equation 2 and write a d dp in front of every single term. You'll notice that far right term already had a d dp, so that's going to become d dp squared. Next up, we're going to subtract equation 1 from equation 2. So here's our equation 2, that's going to go right there, and our equation 1 is going to get subtracted. If you're really focused, you might be able to guess what the next step is going to be. Those two terms are going to cancel. They might look a little bit different, but if you were to throw that chi in with the DDP, you'll see they are the exact same term, but that one's negative, so we can just cancel those on out. Then we're going to take this whole thing, put it on this next slide, and now we're going to rearrange the remaining terms. Let's treat this entire thing right here just as the left hand side. You see this one and this one. Those are just going to stay on the left hand side. These two terms are going to go over to the right hand side, meaning that their signs are going to change. You can see that's true, that FDDP goes from a negative to a positive, and that Laplacian there is now a negative. Step 4, ooh, that should say step 5. We are going to multiply by 1 over sigma and isolate omega to obtain the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. So what do we do there? We multiply by 1 over sigma. That's going to be gone. There's going to be a sigma under there. We see that's true. There's going to be a sigma under there. We see that's true. And a sigma under there. We see that's true. And then we're also going to isolate omega, meaning that omega there and there comes on out. Those get bunched together. The one other thing is, you'll remember this in the tendency video, for some reason meteorologists like writing this d phi dp as a negative. So we're going to write that as a negative, it seems kind of illegal, it's actually not because we're just distributing that negative into there, so that now is a positive. So to sum up, we started with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic and vorticity equations, made a whole bunch of manipulations and then mashed them together and what we end up with is the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. As a reward and thank you for watching the entire video, 
I'm giving you a free PDF download of the video slides so that you can go back over the material and a free PowerPoint download so that you can go through it step by step. You can find those resources by clicking the link in the description or by going to holthanleyweather.com. As always, if you learned something new in this video, click subscribe so that you can learn more in the future and click more videos to start that learning now. Thanks for watching.